Hi, this is your host Sapnil Bharti and we are here at KubeCon and CloudNativeCon in Paris. And today we have with us Michelle Dinani, Principal Software Engineer at Fermion. Michelle, it's great to have you on the show. Thanks for having me. It's, it's, it's been a while since we talked. It's like, I don't know how many decades passed, you know? So, so first of all, I want to talk about you. What have you been up to? So I was at Microsoft for a while. Um, and over there, we were working on open source uh, tools for Kubernetes. I also worked on in the service mesh space for a while, so on open service mesh um, at Microsoft. Um, and then after that, I got really into WebAssembly. So I've been in the WebAssembly space for a while here at Fermion. Um, and we're really excited because I think WebAssembly is a, a wonderful thing to use on Kubernetes and we're seeing more and more interest. And so that's where I've been uh, digging into. How would you define WebAssembly and its role in the cloud native space and in the Kubernetes ecosystem. What WebAssembly is at the end of the day is it's a binary format or a compiled target um, and it allows you to basically compile your application regardless of language into a, a universal compiled target that you can then deploy on any architecture or operating system without making any changes. And it's exciting because that actually unlocks a lot of things for us. Um, the startup speed of WebAssembly is incredibly fast, about half a millisecond. Um, this portable nature of, of WebAssembly allows us to take advantage of cheaper compute wherever it might be. Um, and, and these are starting to unlock a lot of um, practical solutions for companies that have problems around uh, not being able to just throw a bunch of money at a problem. Um, if you want to actually do more with the infrastructure you have, how do you do that? And WebAssembly seems to be a really good solution for that. And if you look at WebAssembly, of course, we can go a lot of discussions happen on the Twitter words and everything. Is it versus Kubernetes or it's with Kubernetes, yeah. on Kubernetes? What is it? That is such a good question. Um, this is, there's such a, um, such a great uh, collaboration here between WebAssembly and Kubernetes. It's something that you can use on Kubernetes, next to your containers, even in the same pod as your container, which is super exciting. Um, and so today we've, we've announced a project actually, it's called SpinCube, and it's a collection of projects that essentially form a stack that allow you to run WebAssembly on Kubernetes in a, in a Kubernetes native way in your pods, using the same tools that you've been using, uh, doing everything um, essentially the same. But leveraging the startup speed that WebAssembly provides, the efficiency, the portability, and, and that's really exciting. And who is the target audience of WebAssembly? It could be so many people. You know what's incredible to me actually is through the years, or through the last several years, I've, I've been hearing about people in different spaces, uh, whether that be um, you know, in, uh, dealing with machines and factories or automobiles or web services and serverless or um, robotics and machinery, like, like all of, or AI, all of these uh, people, they, have these different um, use cases, but they all are coming and converging onto WebAssembly as this thing that they need to do what they need to do. So it could be a diverse, uh, diverse target. What was the origin of the idea? And once again, you know, yeah, let's talk about that and then. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so SpinCube was born out of the idea that we should be able to leverage WebAssembly on Kubernetes and in a cloud native way. And so how do we do that actually? Um, well, we need the right bits on the actual machine. Uh, we need to run, be able to run WebAssembly, so we need the runtime. Um, uh, and we need to be able to switch between using that and the container runtime, because you're probably gonna have both on your cluster. So how do you do that? So we have a containerd shim that actually allows you to execute your WebAssembly binaries um, in your pods. And then on top of that, how do you actually run your apps like logically? How do you think about it? How do you abstract that? So we have a custom resource called a spin app and a spin operator that runs in your cluster. And this operator basically manages your spin apps, deploys the deployments, pods, and services you need. And it does everything behind the scenes to actually configure your pod to be able to 
to execute your WebAssembly applications. A spin cube, is it a product, project? What great, is it? great question also. Uh, spin cube is an entirely open source project. Um, we're so excited that we got to announce today that we've submitted this project um, to the CNCF to be considered for a sandbox position. Um, and so yeah, completely open source. We want it to be in the CNCF. We've been working with companies like Microsoft, SUSE, Liquid Reply. Um, so it's not just a Fermion project, it's actually the combination of a lot of hard work from a lot of different people across a lot of different companies and actually has been in the making for a few years now, so. When we look at open source, open source, you know, it can solve day one problem. You have been in space for a long time, but uh, big organizations, they have all the resources, but not everybody has resources. So that's where commercialization plays a big role. So when we look at the commercial aspect, you know, if you look at SpinCube or Fermion, uh, what about if users, they want it, but they don't have in-house capabilities. So will there be a commercial angle around that as well? Yeah, actually, so that's a really, also a really good question. We got all the really good questions today. Great. So yeah, people don't actually want to use these like disparate like projects that are spread out all over the place, right? So. Uh, one thing is that um, even though SpinCube is is a, a project, it's entirely open source. It's also a stack-based approach, so you don't have to, you know, get things from different places. You can just get this whole stack of projects and run that on your cluster, which is which already provides a good day one experience. And on the commercialization part, again, great question. We've also launched Fermion um, a platform for Kubernetes. Uh, and I'm sure that Butcher will go into that in a little more detail. This is a big discussion these days. You know what I'm going to talk about, right? Gen AI. Yeah. From Fermion's perspective, from the whole WebAssembly perspective, what role do you see of Gen AI LLMs in this space or is too early? Yeah, we've actually, um, uh, we think that AI is a really great uh, uh, niche to be in. We also have our own, um, uh, we offer AI inferencing on uh, Fermion Cloud and, and with Spin. Um, and so what that does is it basically leverages the part of you know, the, the developer experience or the experience where a developer just wants to do some type of inferencing and that's basically a, a compute problem. Um, we've, we have some GPUs that are hosted on CVO, CVO Cloud. Um, and what we do there is we allow uh, time sharing of that GPU so that uh, folks can leverage GPUs without actually having to wait for long startup st times and, and heavy costs. Thank Michelle, you. once again, thank you so much for talking to me. It's been a long day, but I would love to talk to you again. Uh, and you know, and uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to the next discussion. Thank you. Thanks for having me.